brought you a client. That's why we need to find him soon, or we, we will have a very serious problem. Mm. Thanks for the information and the picture. They'll really come in handy. Let me see if I have this straight. Bobby Yale, a boxer at Dunn's Gym, has a crucial fight against the reigning champion in two weeks. But he disappeared two days ago. Yes. Your father, Joe Dunn, boxing manager and gym owner, hanged himself two days ago. Yes. In short, if Bobby Yale is a no-show for his fight, you'll have to pay a fine. But since you don't have the cash on hand, your father's gym would have to close. Yes. So you want me to find Bobby Yale? Yes. No. Jake wants you to find Bobby. Oh, I see. Well, first of all, Your father took his life the same day his pupil disappeared. Sorry, but something just doesn't add up. Damn it, John. Will you take the case or not? I will, but we're talking about Madison Square Garden. The stakes are high, which can only mean things will get ugly behind the scenes. Not to mention pricey. Yes, Mr. Blacksad. If you find Yale and he fights, I'll be able to pay you whatever you ask for.
I know you already went to Yale's apartment and found nothing, but I'll search it myself at some point. That cleaning lady, Mariam Purnell, the one who found Joe Dunn's body, she works part-time at Sam's Diner, just down the road on the left, right? That's right. Uh, I think I might uh, pay her a visit as well. And the gym, of course, and see what I can find. Okay, I think I've got enough to start with for now. Is that done? Wow. What leads a man to do something like this? Life's already dealt me a fair share of blows, but... I don't know why. Something just doesn't add up. I once shredded a bag like that, just out of pure rage. Hmm. Joe Dunn, the boxing coach. You hear anything about his death? Like that? Is that you? I'm just asking a simple question, Chief. Do you have any information on Joe Dunn's suicide? Oh, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Too much work as usual. I haven't been able to assign an officer to that Joe Dunn suicide case. You haven't even heard of it.
You know I'm bound by client detective confidentiality privileges. And you know I'm bound by law enforcement confidentiality. If you find anything relevant or start feeling a bit more talkative, give me a call. Always a pleasure, John. Hey, Weekly, this is... John, did you get my pictures? Yes, I mean... That rhinoceros has one big horn. Uh... uh... And the girl, hot <laughs> damn! You want me to find out her name? Please, pretty please. No, Weekly. Look. The rhinoceros came by and offered me money to keep quiet. Wow. Are we talking petty cash or big bucks? The latter. Half the money is yours. Yeehaw! Okay, let's let's just change the subject. Hey, I heard something weird's going on at this gym. What was the name? Dunn's gym. Didn't you have a pal down there? Can I talk to him? I heard a woman's running it now. A boxing gym. Now, that's what I call news. Actually, I'm working on a case for the gym owner. I'll see what I can do, okay? I'll call you. Thanks, pal. You just made my day. Hello? Black Sad here. Please don't tell me. My husband... You have nothing to worry about, Mrs. Colbert. Do me a favor and enjoy your family. Oh, thank God. Thank you, Mr. Black Sam.
The racist brain is so full of hatred that there's no space for trifles such as common sense or, say, spelling. But this most cultured writer spotted the error and attempted to correct it. Not sure what to make of the outcome. Good morning, sir. Ah, sir, uh, good morning to you. John Blackside, Private Eye. Would you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Not at all. Proceed, Your Honor. Have you seen anything unusual lately? Yes, indeed, kind prince. My pretty little eyes just saw Pink Elephant Parade. <laughs> but naturally, I decided to join in the fun. <coughs> Sorry about your condition. Excuse me? What condition? My sobriety? Oh, worry not, kind prince. I have a plan. <coughs> It just so happens that you can, apple of my eye, do this old man a favor and bring him some sustenance. <laughs> All right. I might just be the last person in New York without a TV. Maybe that's how I should spend the bribe money.
I'd prefer a yellow Cadillac, but I can't complain. I'd prefer a yellow Cadillac, but I can't complain. Good place to spy on Sonia. Looks like Dunn liked to measure his daughter and Bobby Yale each year. Sonia's measurements stop at 18, and there's a gap in Bobby's between ages 15 and 17. I remember that fight, back when Jake was coming up the ranks. I better leave these two alone.
Hey, it's me again. Thing is, Joe Dunn's daughter hired me. Alright, thanks, Joe. But I still don't get it. Any signs of foul play? I just don't get why this guy would hang himself. The gym wasn't making him rich, but one of his pupils was on the rise. Headed straight for Madison Square Garden. Well, there's more to life than business. We all have dark secrets, John. All right. So, are you going to help me? Why should I, Mr. Client Detective Privileges? Anyway, I'm afraid I don't have anything useful to share. And it seems like you don't either. But if you do find something, give me a call. I helped you with your little problem when they killed Natalia. I think I have a new lead on the Dunn case. I found racial slurs painted on the lockers at Dunn's gym. He was pretty open-minded about racial issues. Maybe his death had something to do with that. John, half of the crimes in this city have racial ramifications, unless you have solid proof that it wasn't suicide. My hands are tied. Hmm, I think that's it. Hi, uh... Who are you? Oh, yeah. You bring my... bring my lunch? You... hound... I mean... cat. Do you want anything in particular? Not in particular. Just something that fits in my mouth. Anything with cheese. Yeah, cheese. Lots of cheese. Mary Purnell, the person who found Dunn's body, works a block away from the gym. I'm certain she can give me the kind of information that I... Hey! Watch where you're going, you jerk! You looking for trouble, moron? Sorry. Really, I'm sorry. You better be, you wuss! Ah... Uh... 
And there you go. We'll miss you at Sam's Diner. Come back soon. Welcome to Sam's Diner. What can I get for you? Black Sad, Private Eye. I work for Sonia Dunn. I need to ask you some questions about Joe Dunn. Um, sure. But I'm working right now. <laughs> Maybe later? Please, I need to find Bobby Yale as soon as possible. And I think you can help me. All right. What can you tell me about Sonia Dunn? I barely know her, but she looks like a smart girl, poor thing. Any ideas where Bobby Yale could be? How... how am I supposed to know? He's rarely there when I clean the gym. Bobby seems like a nice kid, but I... I barely know him. Let's talk a bit more about Joe Dunn. What kind of boss was Joe Dunn? A good one. Always paid on time, never raised his voice. If I asked for the day off, he even cleaned the gym. How was Joe Dunn outside the gym? I wouldn't know. I only saw him at the gym or right there. That was his spot. I think everyone liked him. Can you tell me how you found Dunn's body? Well, I thought I was alone. I clean early in the morning before Mr. Dunn comes in. Oh, so you have keys to the gym? Yes, of course. There was paint on the floor, so I thought it'd be a busy morning. And then I saw him, hanging there, like a baby mobile over a crib. Then I think I panicked. When I calmed down, I called the police and waited outside. Sorry, that's all I can say. Don't worry. But if you remember anything else, let me know. Thanks, but I still don't get why he'd commit suicide. Maybe he simply had money issues. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Could be. The gym didn't really get that dirty lately. I heard his relationship with his daughter wasn't ideal. Oh, really? Poor man. I don't have kids, but that has to be really hard. His wife died years ago. Maybe he never got over it. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe he did. That was a long time ago. What do you think about Jake Ostiambi? Who? Who's that? A big gorilla. Boxer, too. A friend of Joe Dunn's. Oh, yeah. I barely know him. I don't like how he looks at me. Can I ask you about your job? Uh, which one? How long have you worked at the gym? It's been, what, four or five years? Although, I don't think I'll be able to set foot in there again. This must be really hard for you. I'm sorry. Tell me about your work here in the diner. Oh, it's wonderful. I love it. My boss. Oh, glad to hear that. 
Other than the diner and the gym, you don't work anywhere else, right? I wouldn't have the time, although I'm not sure I want to continue working at the gym. It might be best to stay away from the gym, at least for a while, for your own well-being. In due time, things might change. Joey used to say the same thing. Maybe. I don't know. Thanks. Can I have a hamburger, please? Oh, sure. Regular or cheese? I think I'll get the cheeseburger. Mm-hmm. You want fries? A drink? No, that's it. Okay. Is that for here or to go, then? To go, please. Mm. One cheeseburger to go, Sam. Okay! Smells like cinnamon. No, cinnamon and burgers. They look puffy and tired. Sleepless nights, hectic days, or has she been crying? Perhaps all of the above. Smells tasty. My pal is going to lick his chops. Her handwriting is nice and neat. Your burger is ready. <laughs> All right, I'll let you enjoy your meal. Four people used the back door that very same night. What? Well, I might be blind as a bat, but as you can certainly see, I have two wonderfully functional ears. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Thank you very much for remembering the cheese, by the way. <laughs> Four people used the back door two days ago? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Who was the first person to use the back door? Someone big. Unlocked the door, stepped inside, <laughs> then came right back out. Who was the second person to use the back door? A man. Just a few minutes after the first person. He came back out muttering, Ungrateful bastard. Then, he threw something in the trash, and walked back in. Oh, no, wait! Before that, he gave me a coin. A coin? I mean, do I look like I need spare change, huh? I mean, I'm staying at the Million Star Hotel, for God's sake. <laughs> Who was the third person to use the back door? Judging by the quiet footsteps, I'd say it was someone small. I'd say it was about 30 minutes after the second person came out. Whoever it was threw something in the trash and stood in front of me for a moment. 
then, I heard a click. And finally, I heard trailing laughter in that direction. Who was the fourth person to use the back door? Someone big. I recall heavy breathing. The person left in a hurry, running in that direction. <laughs> Could he have been a train conductor? Looks like someone used it as a punching ball. Looks like someone used it as a punching ball. I wonder what it feels like to live without legs. Would I manage? Legless. How does he get by? Where did you get that paint can? In the trash can in the back. I found it right after the comings and goings. I wanted to see what those people were leaving behind. There's a chest expander in your cart. A what expander? A thingamajig with three springs. Oh, the thingamajig with springs. Oh, I, I got it from the trash back there. A paint can and a thingamajig with springs. What a night. You were acting a bit strange before, but now you seem fine. Why is that? Hey, you got great vision, sense of smell, hearing. Why is that? Well, I'm a cat. Well, I'm a goat. That's all for now. Thanks.
On the surface, it seems dry, but there's no dust, and it's damp underneath. It could have fallen the day Dunn died. Hmm. Do you remember anything else about the day you found the thingamajig with the springs and the paint can? Yeah, uh, no. <coughs> wait, 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 yeah. Well, no, now that I think of it, uh, no. Hey, pal, how about thanking a good-looking goat with a cigarette? <coughs> <coughs> think that's a good idea. You've got one nasty cough. Oh, come on. You know, cigarettes have lots of very healthy properties. Oh, come on. It's just a smoke, lady. Okay. You're right. <laughs> Yeah, you think you're not responsible for my pathetic state? Think you're not to blame? It's the government that shipped me off to war. They shipped me off too. Oh, right. So then you know what it's like to kill too. 
Well then, another sad hobo shouldn't be a problem for you, Professor. That's none of your business. Okay, okay, I understand. Wait, wait, but... Uh, that's not what I wanted to say. Oh, well, you know we goats tend to jump from one thing to another. <laughs> the government paid for everything. Army fatigues, rations, weapons, <laughs> lodging, hookers, drugs. <clears throat> Do you know where that money comes from? <laughs> taxes! Your taxes, my dear friend. You help them cut my legs. <laughs> they declare <laughs> war, war. Every chance they get so that the weapon industry that finances their campaigns get gets richer and, and richer and richer. And that's how we finance their wars. So, the slightest connection with corruption turns us into accomplices. Unless one manages to keep at arm's length. <sighs> that is what I did, my loyal disciple. At the Million Star Hotel! <laughs> so... Do like your master, the great. Hey, what's your name? You never told me 